uh, begin our worship by singing number 171, which is the servant song. Number 171. Won't you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ's life for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Won't you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. Worship continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the reading of our lesson. A reading from Ephesians. 
For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he might grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever, amen. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 35, found on page 629, Psalm 35, page 629, let us read alternately verses 1 through 11. Fight those who fight me, O Lord, attacking those who are attacking me. Take up shield and armor and rise up to help me. Draw the sword and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be ashamed and humble. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be dismayed. Let them be like chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord drive them away. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For they have secret spread a net for me without a cause. Without a cause they have dug a pit to take me alive. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in their net they hid. Let them fall into the pit that they dug. Then I will be joyful in the Lord. I will glory in his victory. My very bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those who are too strong for them, the poor and the needy from those who rob them. Malicious witnesses rise up against me. They charge me with matters I know nothing about. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Jesus, the teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you shall live. But, wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord.
Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, uh, Tuesday was the feast day of St. Luke, and so it's, it's, this is really particularly fitting that today's reading is the Good Samaritan, as it is unique to the Gospel of Luke, and one of the great stories of his Gospel and of Christianity, and People that have known nothing of Christianity would be familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan. I remember as a kid thinking that a Samaritan must be like a really good person, right? You know, be the, if you're a Samaritan, well, how nice of you. Only to find out later that they were the less than favored half stepchild with red hair that lived you know, across the street that nobody wanted to deal with. Um, and so it's, it's fitting that we reflect on this story this afternoon. As, as I, I'm reading it, one, one of, the, one of the, the tools, literary tools that scripture uses, and it's hard to see in English, is that they, they, they take the, like the story builds to a point and then nails that point home and then kind of works its way back out. So it's kind of like these details that build the story, make the main point, and then kind of come out with more details. And in this one, in the middle of the story, that main point is that when the Samaritan saw him, he was moved with compassion. That his heart was moved on the sight of this person who was in need. And I think at the heart of that message, that story, is for us to, for that to be brought home, is that following Jesus, to be a Christian, to, to fulfill the law of God, that's been planted on our hearts is to be moved with compassion and pity for those that we meet that are in need. At, at, the, at the heart of the gospel and, 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 and the Old Testament and the New Testament is the, uh, a story of transformation, a, a call to have our lives touched and changed. Not so much that our lives are so bad or disordered but that the world has gotten turned upside down and needs to be turned right side up. Problem is, while you're in the midst of turning it, it really feels like you're turning everything upside down. But when it comes right side up, and like a snow globe and all the snow settles, we'll see the way life is really meant to be. The, when, when we hear the story, what the priest and the Levite were doing for us, you know, when, as we hear the story, we think of them being cold-hearted or something. But in truth, they were just being religious. He was beaten and left half dead. They saw somebody dead on this road, and they didn't want to be uh, unclean or contaminated for X amount of time because they've touched or come near something dead. So they've moved around. They've kept themselves pure. But they didn't, you know, they, so they were religious, but they didn't let the transformation of God's love move into their lives in such a way as the Samaritan did, who was moved with compassion and pity. As we listen to that first reading from St. Paul, and um, it's beautiful language, it's very, you know, poetic. But it's hard to know exactly what to do with it, per se, except that Paul is praying that deep in our hearts and in our lives that we really come to know the love of Christ. And I think he speaks that from one who's had that experience himself. One who was on one plan for his life until he met Jesus. He's knocked down, he's blinded, he's given a vision He's instructed by people that were once his enemies until he comes out of that and sees new. His life is taken and turned right side up. And he sees clearly now. And he wants the church, those that he's told the story of Jesus to, he wants them to see that too. He wants them to know the power of both the crucifixion and the resurrection. And to live lives of 
of neighborly love that exceeds that of the priests and the Levites. We've got to have our hearts moved and transformed, and that's done by allowing God's love to break through all of our exterior stuff and begin to work and melt that. And then that's that transforming power. And we wonder what we should do to get there. You're in luck. You're doing it. <laughs> Taking time in your life to, to worship, to pray, to reflect. Sharing what you have. Participating in the life of the church. And in the midst of that, those walls come down and that beautiful little snow globe of your life is rotated over. Just remember, it's going to keep turning. Don't, don't stop halfway because that's a mess. Turn it over and see what, what God really has intended for us and what life really can be. Amen. James, would you read the prayers of the people? For me? Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Kathy, for Josie, for John. We pray also for those on our Grace Church prayer list. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O oh Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be whole. Hear us, yes, oh Lord. Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance, and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and awareness of your presence. Hear us, O oh Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress through soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O oh Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering. Grant them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant the faithfully departed may continue to grow in the presence of your lasting light and love. Hear us, us O Lord, Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the people. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your life, we see, we see life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Gracious God, hear our prayers. Hear what is going on within our hearts. And heal them. May these prayers come to you. And may you, by your love and grace, your spirit in the world, transform and touch them. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Take a moment of silence before we confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share with one another a sign of God's love and peace. Yeah. Say, y'all keep Carol sock in prayer. She, she has shingles. Keep away, sure. Yeah, exactly. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord. To show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic prayer A. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. 
All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. If anybody would like um, additional prayers or anointing, I'd invite you to come forward. My sister. Jay, we anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pray for continued healing in your hand. Keep it safe. May all those tendons fall back into place. For your sister to be at peace. And Lord, we thank you for the good things that you're working in your life now. We we'll all ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Retirement. Retirement. Is it looming heavy? Yes. No, no options opening up here for you? No, I have them. I just. Oh, if you want them. I hear that. Well, Lucy, we anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray for wisdom and peace at this time in your life. Open doors and close doors. Put those signs and directions in her life that give her wisdom and peace. Let her have that deep sense of confidence that you breathe into us and knowing that you trust us more than we trust ourselves. Guide her and direct her and give her your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. James, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then you pray for Joan, for his healing and presence, the son David. Lord, for your grace and presence to be in and around him and in his family. Lord, that you would always give us comfort when we need it. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus, God. I guess I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we pray for Bradley, and we pray for Scott, for healing, for peace, and for patience. 
for strength in their bodies and their minds and in their hearts. And Lord, for your tender guidance, for strength for, for Augusta as a caregiver. And Lord, for your love to always surround them. In Jesus' name, amen. Post-communion prayer is on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us from the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 153. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister bothers me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister bothers me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, Standing in the need of prayer Not the deacon, not the preacher bothers me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer Not the deacon, not the preacher bothers me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer You're not my neighbor, not a stranger, but it's me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer Not my neighbor, not a stranger, but it's me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord Standing in the need of prayer Standing in the need of Standing in the need of Standing in the need of Prayer God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.